Okay, welcome back. So in the previous one we in, uh, we created chests or storage containers. In this one we are going to create the save system. So let's just get started with that. Instead of our inventory, uh, instead of our content drawer actually, I'm going to make it a folder. I'm going to go to save system. Let's make that green. And have I forgotten anything else? No, the image files is okay. So the save system, go into that. Make it a uh, blueprint class. This is going to be our save game object. I'm going to call this one my save game object. My save game. You can open that up right away. Inside of the save system folder, we need to add a structure. This one is going to be our saved, saved uh, container, saved container struct. Saved containers struct. It is going to have an integer type id and it's going to have contents inventory contents array and we're going to call that contents that is it for that struct you can copy that name paste it in here save containers that needs to be an array and that's our save game as well let's head over into our game instance make the same variable array and that's good now we can do a event initialize does save game exist i'm gonna do my save game my save game do a branch if it doesn't exist we want to create save game object my save game promote that to my save game object out from this we want to set saved container struct be that of our save container struct like so get your save game object save game to slot slot name is my save game like so if it does exist load game from slot my save game cast to my save game set the save game object out from the save game object get save container struct and then set that uh, set our info to the incoming one from the save game that's it for our our saving of the containers no saving of the uh, loading and saving, creating of the save game. That's what I'm trying to say. Now we just need a way to actually handle this. So, inside of our inventory system, inside of our inventory component, I'm going to make a new variable. This one's going to be called ID. ID. Well, let's expose and edit that just to make sure that everything is set. It's going to default to zero. That's fine. We are, however, not never going to want to use zero on our on our yeah in our, on our inventory component. We can do a save inventory. And what we're going to do, we need a hard drive. No, we need a, a game instance. So on our begin play, let us handle that first of all. Cast to my game instance. No, not my save game. Cast to my game instance. Get game instance. Promote that to game instance ref. Once we have that, we are able to access our information. So let's go into a save inventory again. Get your game instance, get your save container struct. In here, we're going to do a for each loop. Actually, let's do a for each loop with break. We're going to check if the ID is the same as our id that is true then we're going to break that is false we're not going to do anything we're going to do a double check down here out of completed if the id is not the same so if, if it finishes this entire thing gets out from complete and it's not the same then we want to add it. We're going to get our game instance ref. 
and our save struct we're going to add add ourselves to it oh sorry drag that out split this open id is our id contents is our contents and then i'm going to do a print string Uh, didn't find saved container added it with ID uh, let's not do that let's do a append on that added it with ID and then I'm gonna pass on the ID and then over on our game instance do a custom event call this one save containers Oh, save game on save game i'm going to get my save game object set save game container struct save save container struct to be that of mine and then i'm going to save game to slot this one and then i'm going to do another print with an append saved game with container struct array length of let's just make sure that we are getting the right number populated and i'm also going to do on the load another append loaded save loaded existing save game with container struct length array length off now we can get this one do a length plug that in at the start nothing's actually happening and that is so I need to remove my save game. So I'll be right back. There, loading existing with an array of zero. So I haven't done anything yet. Didn't find save container, added it with ID, and then that. And then we can do a save game from our game instance. Return. And that should be fine for the save. However, if it is the same, then I want to uh, get our array set array element how oh, about from that how from this one size to fit always the index comes from the one that we found the id is our id contents is our contents printing Mm. like so found existing saved container updated 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 on id that one then we can save that game so that's it for a save now when do we want to save? I'm going to save on. Do, do, do. When am I going to save? I'm going to save. I kind of want to save on the set item in what index, but it's not. Uh... Actually, is that. Hang on. Let me see where we can save this. Where we can start saving it. So if we merge stacks, we're setting. Yeah, okay. So we're setting the item in for index everywhere. So we can save it there. When we set the item in for index. We're also just going to call our save inventory. Loaded, saved, found, existing. Okay, so now it's because in our event graph, we haven't actually done anything. So if I do this, it, it has found it, found existing, right? However, there are two things that, uh, there are multiple things that is actually wrong here. Right? We need a load inventory, first of all. 
Apart from this, we're going to get our save game continue to struct. We have to do a for each loop, actually. You know what? Delete that. Duplicate the save. Call it load inventory. If uh, I'm actually just going to delete all of that and then keep this loop. That's the only thing I want. So we are looping through our save container struct. If the ID is the same as our ID, if it's not, we're just going to return and continue on with our lives. However, if it is, we're going to set our contents and set our ID to be that of the... Uh, we, we could actually just uh, do this and get a copy there at the index. And then now we have our ID. Now we have our contents. Then we can continue to return. Now we're on our event graph. We can load inventory before we go into the D size. I'm going to delete my save game again. Then another thing that I said we are we have more problems. So inside of our third person character, I'm going to set up so that the inventory is ID 1, my armor is ID 2, and that's always going to be that. And then my action bars are going to be 3 and up. And then, onto this small storage container, under details, under component, I'm now going to set this ID to be like, I'm going to do 100 and up. So 100 is 1 and 100 is 2, and then so. It's adding them, I go out, I play, it's there, can move things around so let's move all down here so it's visible that's okay we go into the storage container let's move in those two and that storage container is also good to go working perfectly awesome i don't think there's uh, much more to do with the save system so we're not gonna fuck around too much with that uh, this video is a bit short though, so let's set up the. Yeah, let's make it so that you can use your. Uh, not use your action bars, but uh, have them selected and such. Okay, so over on our inventory slot, we know which ones are on the, on the event graph. I'm going to click the event graph and I'm going to close all other tabs. So over on my first person character, no, my third person character, sorry, on the event graph. So I'm there. I'm going to go into my project settings and I'm going to go into my inputs. I'm going to add an input axis, uh, an axis mapping here. This one is going to be uh, mouse wheel. Yeah, that's fine. Probably already have one. Doesn't matter. We have multiple. This is a mouse wheel. So if I now do NW, out from this one, I'm going to make a, uh, a variable. This one's going to be our selected slot integer. We are going to set selected slot to be that of selected slot plus, let's look a little bit weird, plus the input axis or the, the, the axis value, sorry. That will truncate that, and that's going to give us an updated selected slot. We also want to make sure that if the selected slot is greater than 11, in my case, 0 to 11, that's 12, and I have 12 slots. If it is greater than 11, I'm going to set it to 0. And equally, if selected slot is less than zero out on this false so I want to set select slot to be 11 so that's going to loop through loop through our slots at the very beginning I'm going to add a sequence actually because after this is done I do want to update the selected slot so I'm going to make a function I'm going to call this one update selected slot 
we'll get our AB1, so because that's our action button one, action bar one. We're gonna get our refs. We're gonna do a four each leap. We're gonna do a check to, just just to make sure that it's valid. If it is valid, then we're gonna call a function over on our inventory slot. So I'm gonna call this one update selected slot. We're gonna have an input of selected slot. Go back to my third person guy for a second. I'm calling this there. Selected slot is our selected slot, like so. Open up your selected slot. I'm going to promote this to a local variable. So local selected slot. If my index is equal to the local selected slot, I'm going to get my slot border. I'm going to do a set brush tint color. The tint I'm going to do is, uh, I don't know, green. Yeah, looks good. So if it is selected, oh shit, we haven't actually branched that. Sorry. If it is selected, I want to go green tint. If it is not, you want to go white because that is the default. Like so. We're in a third person character. Event graph. Now I want to call our update selected slot. And that's our little. Yeah, that's our little selection menu. Thing, thingamajig. So now we are able to select that. Uh, I do think this is it for this particular episode. We have saves, we have all of that uh, good stuff. Maybe if I feel like it, I will add a Minecraft style crafting system to this as well, if someone wants that. But I also think we need to maybe focus on adding controller functionality before we start moving forward. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, let me know what you liked or hated about it. I know I can go a bit fast sometimes, but I'm not uh, good at teaching at all. I'm trying my best, but yeah, I'm getting better, I hope. If you feel like joining the Discord, feel free. I'm going to leave a uh, link in the description. We would love to have you there, and that would be the best place to get help with the videos as well. Okay, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.